two presidents. First, statements by the presidents and then questions by you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, uh, Your Excellency President Osmani Sadriu. I'm delighted to welcome you on your first visit to Lithuania. Cooperation, unity, and solidarity between European countries are vitally important and necessary today. During our meeting today, we had the opportunity to discuss in detail the response of the democratic world to Russia's war in Ukraine and the implications of this military aggression, not only for the security situation in the Baltic region, but also in the Western Balkans. We also discussed bilateral relations between our two countries and the prospects for the further development. I am glad that Europe has united against the raging evil. And I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the president of Kosovo and to the people of her country for being among the first to condemn Russia's brutal, unprovoked war against Ukraine, for joining all EU sanctions on Russia and Belarus, for your assistance to Ukraine, and for taking in Ukrainian war refugees. At today's meeting, we agreed to continue to stand united in supporting Ukraine as it fights for its freedom and values and those of Europe as a whole. Today, as Russia seeks to destabilize Europe by various hostile means and ways, we must stay united. We must maintain peace and stability in the Balkans and the Baltic region. We must maintain peace and stability across the entire European continent. And in this respect, I believe that we will have a very important NATO meeting in Madrid. And once again, we will be able to accentuate the importance of stability and security in the eastern flank of the alliance and, of course, across uh, NATO countries. I would like to assure you that Lithuania fully supports Kosovo's independence, territorial integrity, Euro-Atlantic aspirations, and continued efforts to consolidate its statehood and build a democratic, multi-ethnic, and prosperous state. I would like to congratulate you, Madam President, and the people of your country on the significant progress achieved on the path to European integration. Lithuania is ready to share its experience, and I underlined it during our meeting, to share our experience in implementing reform. Also support Kosovo's aspirations to pursue closer ties with NATO and to contribute in this way to strengthening the security in the region. We are looking for solutions to develop the potential of economic cooperation, to share good practices and the lessons learned, especially via twinning programs. Europe's security, stability, and prosperity depend on our unity, our ability to coordinate our actions, to support each other, and to defend our core European values. We are strong together. Madam President. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, dear President Alcieda, members of the delegations, members of the press, Labadiena. Good afternoon, everyone. I am delighted to be here in Vilnius, Lithuania's beautiful capital today. This visit is uh, very special for us because it marks my first visit as President of the Republic of Kosovo to Lithuania. But also this May marks 14 years since Lithuania has recognized our independence. And it ter in turn has also recognized the struggle and the will of the people of Kosovo for freedom and independence. Lithuania is an embodiment of everything that can be achieved when a nation is granted its rightful path of freedom, independence, and democracy. The progress you have made is an inspiration to younger countries like ours, but also around the world. There is much that brings our people together from our shared historic struggles for independence to traditions that our respective nations share. But most importantly, the values that we both cherish so deeply. Mr. President, 
I think you'll agree that these values are directly under threat and under attack by Russia, not just in Ukraine, but across our continent and beyond. And I believe that my visit here today is timely and much needed as it confirms our steadfast commitment towards strengthening our partnership as two democratic, democratic and peace-loving nations. The crossroads in which we find ourselves as a continent will define Europe for decades to come. But I'm confident that with friendships and alliances like the one that exists between our two countries, we can jointly respond to the efforts from Russia and its proxies to destabilize Europe and perhaps the world. Although it has long been the desire and the will of the people of Kosovo to strengthen our international standing and to, and to become an even greater contributor to peace and stability, the current security situation in Europe should serve as a strong and timely reason to push Kosovo forward on its Euro-Atlantic path. Mr. President, today, during our meeting, we also discussed Kosovo's ambitions to join the Council of Europe, NATO, as well as the European Union. I want to thank you for the support that you have sh shown and also to offering Lithuania's expertise in this crucial journey. The support you have shown us today and the support Lithuania has given our country during our struggle for independence and state building is a testament also to the big heart of the Lithuanian people. We remain grateful and we continue to count on you. You continue to demonstrate this generosity today by hosting tens of thousands of Ukrainian refugees. And as a former refugee myself, and as a president of a people who were almost entirely displaced during the war, I want to thank you for the work in supporting Ukrainians in this way and in many other ways. Mr. President, although this visit has naturally been focused also on how we can strengthen cooperation in a range of fields, from security and defense to economy and technology, I also want to take this opportunity to express once again our full solidarity and support for the people of Ukraine during this difficult time. The war in Kosovo was just two decades ago. The wounds in our society are still very deep, and there is no one who better understands the people of Ukraine at this difficult time. It's for this reason that we have done everything we can to support them, both in action through the immediate sanctions against Russia and Belarus, but also in line with our international partners by raising our voice for, their, for the Ukrainian suffering. Today, I also want to express our solidarity with your nation. We understand the difficulties that come with having an aggressive neighbor. Unfortunately, our neighbor Serbia continues to serve Russian interests in our region by being the only country to not impose sanctions and continues to support Russia's malign and destabilizing agenda. But as I said, I am confident that together with friends like Lithuania, we can build a more prosperous and peaceful Europe. Thank you once again, Mr. President, for welcoming us today. And I look forward to continuing our discussions with the aim of bringing our two nations, our economies, as well as our people closer together. Lithuania and Kosovo have seen that in the face of tyranny and evil, it is always the resilience and the spirit of a freedom-loving people that triumphs. I say with great conviction that the people of Ukraine will triumph again. Achu, thank you. Uh, fellow colleagues, uh, journalists, we have time for two questions. Uh, I will ask you to identify yourself and the outlet you represent. And the question that is addressed to, to whom? A question to both presidents. Uh, Finnish leaders have officially uh, stated that Finland must immediately join NATO. How would it change uh, the situation in the alliance and also in the Baltic uh, region? Uh, could you uh, confirm that all formalities could be done before the NATO summit? And now, is, are you sure that all NATO member states would approve of Finland's membership in NATO? Uh, I have repeatedly uh, stated uh, that uh, we look favorably uh, to Finland's possible membership in NATO as well as uh, Sweden's possible membership in NATO. And I believe that it would uh, surely strengthen the security in the Baltic uh, uh, region. 
uh, it would uh, improve uh, secu the security control in the region, and it would also consolidate our military cooperation with these uh, countries. Although I have to point out that we are already uh, working together in uh, the JEF format. Finland and Sweden uh, are partners in this program and very responsible uh, participants. So whether or not the, the formalities will be completed, although this is the aim to have them completed until the NATO summit takes place, but the possible decision is yet difficult to pr predict. Uh, but I would like to repeat that the countries in our region and most of our partners uh, see this prospect in a very positive way. And I believe that there will be no major obstacles in this respect. I believe that the Russian unprovoked war against Ukraine has created an entirely new situation in our continent where membership in NATO should be seen from a security lens, from a security perspective. Therefore, all freedom-loving nations in our continent who want to contribute to peace and security deserve to be in NATO, and their membership aspirations should be supported. Moreover, I believe that when it comes to not just Finland and Sweden, but also when it comes to countries in our region, the Republic of Kosovo, as well as Bosnia-Herzegovina, we need support for an accelerated membership process towards NATO. Not just because the people of Kosovo, over 93%, are in favor of joining NATO, but it has been our histor historical aspiration since 1999 when NATO came to our rescue and stopped the ongoing genocide in our country. Um, today, we're facing an absurd situation where countries that are anti-NATO, like Belarus and Serbia, are in PFP, Partnership for Peace, but Kosovo has not yet received an invitation to join PFP. We look forward to working with all NATO members and with the organization as such to be able to start that very first step for our country, which is joining Partnership for Peace, and later on, work together with friends and partners and allies in fulfilling all of the criteria so that one day, hopefully very soon, we can also join the organization. One more question, please. Uh, Baltic News Agency, Mr. President, uh, the Ukrainian Foreign Minister has said that the Ukraine should have a seat reserved in the European Union and that the assessment procedure should be completed. How could Lithuania further contribute to granting the European uh, Ukraine EU member state status? We are discussing this issue with our colleagues in the European Union, also with those uh, countries that support uh, Ukraine's uh, candidate country status. Uh, we also discuss the issue with those countries who are skeptical about uh, granting the status to Ukraine. But please believe me, the discussion will be interesting. I cannot predict its outcome, but I believe that we have to do the utmost so that Ukraine would receive a very clear message as regards its membership in the European Union. Uh, because we have always made an all-out effort, and we will continue doing so, to convince all EU member states to understand the importance of this moment. And I would like to emphasize it once again. Uh, granting a candidate status is uh, it is a full stop on the path uh, to the European Union, but Ukraine needs it uh, vitally. It is not merely a full stop. It is a turning point uh, on its path. It is a very, uh, the circumstances are very uh, critical, and Ukrainian people are waiting and sacrificing their lives uh, in the battlefield. 
So I am fully convinced that uh, Ukraine deserves uh, a candidate status 105 percent. Of course, uh, uh, later on, a very difficult uh, path will follow. Uh, decisions will have to be made to, to ensure Ukraine's membership in the European Union. But today, we have to make the first step uh, talks uh, that perhaps we will grant uh, some prospects to Ukraine in other ways or um, by offering them, them uh, some substitutes. I do not believe them. I do not think that they are. Uh, sincere offerings, and I think that they're not fair to the Ukrainian people. That's why we are preparing very seriously for such meetings and have encouraged and urged on all the twin institutions uh, who take part in uh, relevant uh, meetings uh, uh, at the EU level uh, to raise this question very seriously and that it uh, should come hand in hand with the sanctions, tightening sanctions against uh, Russia. And we have to do everything in our power so that our conscience is clear in the future and that we have done everything that we could and uh, that we had to. to we believe that we are one of the most friendly countries to Ukraine, and this is not only our opinion, but the Ukrainian people also think so. So we have to respect this status, and we have to uphold it. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam President and Mr. President. The press conference is over.